So Fulham beat Reading 7-0 last night, but don't worry Reading fans, we've all been there in the past. We are here today to count down each championship club's heaviest defeat of the last 10 years or so. Starting out with Derby County, who lost 6-1 to Cardiff back in September 2009. Now, fresh off their relegation from the Premier League, it took Derby a little bit of time to sort of re-establish themselves properly in the Championship and actually get back and going and battling it in and about the top half of the table. 2009 seemed to be a tough year for them as Cardiff put six goals past them in this one. Michael Chopra on the score sheet four times in this game. Peter William gave Cardiff the lead after just 10 minutes and things just seemed to really snowball in the second half. The only sort of saving grace from this one, the fact that Rob Hulls pulled a consolation goal back for them to make it 6-1. 2013 wasn't a great year for Barnsley, they lost 6-0 to Charlton at home as well which makes it all the more humiliating. Amazingly so, they weren't actually relegated in the season that they lost 6-0 to Charlton, they were then relegated the following year but a real stinking result towards the tail end of the season. Amazingly so though, they just about managed to scrape survival that year before being relegated to League 1 the next year after. Back in April 2010, Peterborough lost 6-0 at Reading. Now 2010 wasn't exactly the greatest of years for Peterborough, they were rooted to the bottom of the championship, had a pretty dismal defensive record, they went on to concede 80 goals that season, 6 of them coming in this game against Reading. After their match, Gary Johnson said they scored 6 but could have had 10 which shows just how bad it was. Reading of course were going to last night and it's about time we spoke about it, Reading nil, Fulham 7. Now this isn't going to be the only 7-0 that Fulham were involved in um, on today's list but a real humiliation for Reading especially considering the position that they're in at the moment now. Now a part of me had a little bit of sympathy for Velko Panovic in the first half because everything that could have possibly gone against Reading in that first half went against them you know Scott Down went off with an injury just a few minutes into this one their squad was already looking really light with their fullbacks away on AFCON or the injuries that are built up lately you know only six subs were named on the bench. They gave away the first goal so cheaply the second goal being the penalty Andy Carroll scored two outrageous goals that were both ruled out for offside but the capitulation in the second half that's where the fingers really get you know pointed back at the manager because the mentality absolutely stunk from Reading in that second half and uh, you know Fulham had seven goals in this one but it felt so easy for them like at the click of a finger they could have just got another if they wanted to Fulham in fairness to them were absolutely relentless but this makes me really fearful now for Reading for the rest of the season. With Cardiff, we're actually going to my side, Preston North End, who beat them 6-0 at Deepdale back in 2009. And this game actually had quite the implication on the end of the season because we ended up pipping Cardiff to a playoff spot on the last day of the season thanks to goal difference, which massively swung in North End's favour on this 6-0 win we had over Cardiff way back in 2009. Albeit our playoff campaign wasn't successful in the end, but yeah, Cardiff had a real stinker in that one. For Hull City, we're only going back a couple of seasons, but they lost 8-0 to Wigan Athletic back in July 2020. They went on one of probably the worst runs of championship history. It was that season where they lost Krasitsky and Bowen in the January transfer window. Their form seriously tailed off towards the end of the season and ultimately ended in relegation. But what was really the cherry on the cake was Wigan putting eight goals past them in this one. For Birmingham, we're going back to their 8-0 loss to Bournemouth back in October 2020. 14. We actually did a documentary about Birmingham on the channel not too long ago and this game always gets flagged up in the history of Birmingham. They were actually managerless at the time having recently sacked um, Lee Clark. Bournemouth were an absolute animal this season. The team they had this season was something else but to lose 8-0 especially in front of your own fans yeah, it's always a tough pill to swallow, isn't it? What didn't help them was the fact that they went down to 10 men just seven minutes into this game, and yeah, Bournemouth certainly capitalised. Now looking at Swansea's heaviest defeats throughout their last few years, to be fair to them, they actually look fairly respectable by the way of the opposition that they've actually come against. They've had 5-0 defeats in the past 10 years to Manchester City, Liverpool, and Tottenham Hotspurs. So Comparing Swansea with some of the other teams that we're going to talk about in comparison with some of those opposition that they come up against actually doesn't make for all too grim reading here. Luton Town were keeping it to this season when Birmingham put five goals past them. They just seemed to absolutely crumble in this game, didn't they? And it came against the Birmingham side who haven't exactly been a free scoring side so far this season. In fact, Birmingham have averaged less than a goal per 90 so far this season. They've only scored 23 championship goals, which means that 21% of the goals 
goals that Birmingham have scored this season came against Luton in this match. Bristol City were just going back to last season when Watford beat them by six goals to nil. This was at a time when Bristol City were quite badly out of form. Zisco Munoz had just come into Watford and was properly sort of getting his feet under the table and they were having their sort of promotion surge towards the end of the season and everything just sort of accumulated in Watford absolutely running through Bristol City in this one. When it comes to Preston North End, Brentford haven't been the kindest of teams to us over the last few years in the Championship. They've had two 5-0 wins over us in the last five years years. One of them came last season and the one before that came back in 2016 when Simon Grayson was the North End manager. As well as those couple of 5-0 defeats, we also had a 6-0 defeat at the hands of Newcastle United whilst in the League Cup. For Sheffield United, we're of course going back to last season when they were having a bit of a torrid time in the Premier League and they were on the receiving end of a few sort of harsh score lines. And um, back then it was Aaron Ramsdale doing his best to sort of try and keep the score line down. But the heaviest defeat of that time came to the hands of Leicester City, who put five goals past them in a 5-0 defeat back in March. 2014-15 was quite the tough year for Blackpool, I think it's fair to say. They were ultimately relegated from the championship, bottom of the table. They were struggling for players coming into the season as it was as off the pitch issues ran rife within the club and seriously on the end of some batterings that season uh, Bournemouth put six goals past them in a 6-1 defeat Blackpool had Watford put seven past them in a 7-2 defeat they had that season Odie and the Gallo coming up with four goals in that 7-2 defeat to Watford they had for Millwall we're going back to the last game of last season when Coventry put six goals past them in a 6-1 defeat on the final day of the season and really quite a bizarre match to be honest with you because we always associated Millwall you know especially that season of being quite sort of stingy at the back you know keeping things fairly tight the game before this they just put four goals past Bristol City themselves so it seems to be in a really good run of momentum coming into the final day but last day of the season the championship always throws up a few wacky results and that's exactly what we got in this one. Coventry have come a hell of a long way in a short period of time because only back in 2018 you will beat them by six goals to two in a league two match now coincidentally Coventry did actually go on to be promoted this year they ended up finishing six and got promoted via the playoffs which was sort of the you know catalyst for their real rebuild but that sort of properly puts things into perspective of just how rapid their rise has actually been from League 2 back up to the Championship. When it comes to Nottingham Forest, we're of course going to Derby 5, Nottingham Forest 0. Now losing 5-0 is tough to stomach in the first place, but when it's your arch rivals doing it to you, that just makes things a hundred times worse. Derby were absolutely rampant this day though. It was Craig Bryson with a hat-trick, Jeff Hendrick with a goal and Johnny Russell with a strike as well. Yeah, sorry for bringing up the PTSD there for Forest fans with that one. For Stoke City, we're going back to July 2020 as Leeds United put five goals past them in a 5-0 defeat at Ellen Road. This was sort of like at the peak of Bielsa Ball in the Championship really. Leeds in the tail end of the season, storming their way towards promotion and Stoke Stoke were really like a deer in the headlights um, is probably the best way of describing this one. Some of the football on display from Leeds this day I remember was absolutely flawless and Leeds always seemed to have a good game in there up their sleeve against Stoke didn't they? Back in September 2009 Middlesbrough were beaten 5-0 by West Brom at the Riverside with Gareth Southgate back then as their manager. He's come quite some way taking the battle run off West Brom here back in 2009 to now being the England manager. For Huddersfield we're only going back to last year when Norwich put seven goals past them at Carroll Road to beat them 7-0 in this one. Timu Puki with a hat-trick, Buendia, Cantwell, Dowell and Hugel all on the score sheet for this one and I suppose this goes to show how far Huddersfield have come in quite a short period of time because last season they were absolutely all over the place at the back. They had the worst defensive record in the league and these sort of you know, absolute demolitions against them became quite common at one point of the season, didn't they? But kept things much tighter this time around. But yeah, want to forget there for Huddersfield fans. For QPR, we're going back to August 2018 when West Brom beat them by seven goals to one at the Hawthorns back when Steve McLaren was their manager. After this game, I think a lot of us thought that, okay, QPR are now sort of like nailed on for relegation. You know, they looked absolutely dismal in this game. But out of nowhere, after a couple games, they suddenly started to win matches under Steve McLaren and they went on a bit of a run under him. So it does go to show that sometimes after you've taken a real battering, 
that can sort of shift your mindset and you sort of, you know, pull your socks up a little bit. But yeah, this one came right at the start of the season. I remember it quite well. West Brom's biggest defeat in the decade came at Stamford Bridge as Chelsea put six goals past them on the first day of the 10-11 season. Coincidentally, West Brom actually went on to have an all right season this time in the Premier League. They went on to finish 11th, but I'm sure after that first game week, you know, losing 6-0 to Chelsea, Baggies fans were fearing the worst at the time. For Blackburn Rovers, we're going back to earlier in the season when full and put seven goals past them at Ewood Park. Walked away with a 7-0 victory. The second time Fulham um, have been involved on this list this season, beating the team 7-0. But what a run Blackburn have gone on since. Um, this came at quite a weird point of the season, really, because Blackburn had won their previous two games going into this one as well. And, you know, Van Heck got that early red card in the first half. Fulham then just had an absolute field day in the second half with them, didn't they? Well, like we were mentioning before, sometimes a defeat as humiliating as this when a team puts seven past you can just be the sort of, you know, motivation to start turning things around. And Blackburn have certainly used that to their advantage since. Fulham haven't always had things going their own way, though, because back in December 2013, Hull beat them by six goals to nil in a Premier League fixture. This season ultimately saw Fulham relegated to the Championship, and they were pretty hopeless for the most of this um, season actually they went through three different managers the club was in a real state at the time and yeah Hull absolutely battered them in this one for Bournemouth they were beaten 6-0 by Norwich earlier on in this season in the EFL Cup a game which I'd completely forgotten about albeit both teams had made quite a few changes for that one you know it was very much you know two sort of B teams going up against each other so in terms of their biggest league defeat of the decade that came at the hands of Watford back in 2013 when they beat them by six goals to one but guys there we have it, there was every championship club's biggest defeat of the decade just to sort of ease the wounds a little bit that I'm sure a lot of Reading fans woke up feeling and um, this morning after their game last night if you're going to enjoy guys make sure to go ahead and leave a like and do stick around and subscribe for some regular championship content apart from that though thanks very much for watching and I'll see you all in the next one